Hi everyone and welcome back to the afternoon of our Futures at UN92 Business Day event. I hope you all had a lovely lunch and you've managed to all get outside in the lovely sun. I'll definitely be doing that later on today. Um, we have a really jam-packed afternoon for you guys. So we have uh, a course taster with our brilliant academic flow. We then have an employability session Mel Hill, which will be a focus on a personal uh, brand. And then we have two on-demand sessions that you can catch up on on our schedule, which is a student live talk from one of our accounting students, Alex Kia, and also a session that we uh, did with KPMG a few weeks ago, which is making connections with KPMG. And it's a focus on LinkedIn and also kind of creating those connections during a digital age and particularly during the pandemic and, and the difficulties and actually some top tips around that. So without further ado, I'd love to get started with our course cases. So Fleur, I could see you just peep on before if you're able to share, uh, turn your camera on. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. And just to everyone that's watching, if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat box and I'll be on the chat box answering any of your questions. But without further ado, Fleur, if you're, if you're ready to get started, that'd be brilliant. Um, thank you, Katie. And hi to everyone. Um, I don't know whether I disappear when I start to share my screen or not, whether you can see me or not. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to run through um, our business and sport management degrees. Um, and I'll probably mention a little bit about our accounting and finance and accounting and business degrees as well as we go through. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen. So just apologise when uh, all you can see is my screen at the moment. Right, so I have got a PowerPoint and I do apologise, however, it's the best way and it helps me go through um, exactly what we're, we're, we're doing. So first of all, I'm going to just do a quick intro. Um, and this is what we would normally do if you were coming on campus to talk to us. So a quick intro, who am I? I'm Flo Middlebrough and I'm the course leader um, of all things business and, and accounting. My favourite things are Christmas. I know Christmas is gone, but when you've got another 10 months to go. Um, shoes and coffee. So a little bit about me. Um, and say I'm within the business and accounting team. We also have a number of tutors and at the moment within our team, we have Dave, Emma, Jenny, Lisa and Steph, who you'd also get introduced to as well. And they teach over um, all of our programmes. So you probably would have some sort of interaction with them as well. So it's just a little bit of a who are we? What do we do? Who is involved? So straight into um, our degrees. The first one that I'm going to have a look at is um, our BA in sport management and the students normally ask me what they're most interested in is what will you study. So in your first year of study you are going to be studying and these are in no particular order because they do slightly change um, the order but you will do the same modules. You'll do an introduction to sport and exercise um, and psychology and within that module, you'll actually be over with our sports students. So there's quite a lot of cross curricular that goes on, which is great. So you're not just um, pushed with our business and accounting students. You actually go across and see um, our other students as well, which is really good for your learning. We then do um, another module called management and organisation. And that's a little bit like an introduction to um, business studies, but a little bit more developed. You then go and specialise. So those two units are with our business students and with our sports students. You then go um, on your own and you move into an introduction to sport management and marketing. So you're looking at sports in particular on its own and the marketing, which would be slightly different to if any of you um, have already done business studies and have done marketing within business studies. We look at it from a sport point instead. The final module that we do is for event management. So again, yes, you may have done sort of looked at event management within um, business, but it is just specifically around the sports, which has been quite interesting this year. And um, hopefully we're getting out of it now as we move on to the end of lockdown. No, I said it, I'm sorry, I apologise. Um, but we've looked at within this, the difficulties that the sports sector um, has faced. So in particular, Within that as well, and you'll probably be aware of this, we also have um, an additional 20 credits of your overall degree, which is, is around our target talent curriculum or our CPD is what it's also known as. And within that, we embed um, a number of skills. For example, we do um, like financial literacy, we do resilience, we do wellbeing, we do 
um, teamwork, and they get built within all of your modules from year one all the way through to year three to um, not only help you develop your academic knowledge, but also that it's about your employability. So that's how we, we put them together. So moving on to our business studies, what do you study? Um, if you've already done business at GCSE or business at A-level or business at BTEC, some of these you will start to recognise. So in your year one, you will do marketing as a module on its own. So looking at all things marketing, and it's, it's an introduction to it. It's not a marketing degree, but it does give you an, a good in-depth knowledge within our marketing. You also work with our sport management students where we do management and organisation. So again, you get cross-curricular. <coughs> excuse me. You then do, <coughs> excuse me. You then do economics, um, which really is a business economics rather than an economics as you would normally do in economics degree. We are slightly changing some of the, the names of these um, to make it a little bit more business studies friendly for next year. And also introduction to financial accounting don't be scared. What we're trying to do is introduce you to um, things such as financial statements that as a business graduate, you would have to be looking at. So that's why we introduce that in there. I know a lot of people get a little bit scared about, oh, I don't do accounting. I'm really, really not. I'm not good at maths. I'm not doing an accounting degree. We're not expecting you to do that. But we want to give you those skills that when you graduate, within your um, area that you graduate, you can actually look at the financial side of things and understand them. It doesn't mean that you have to create them. And again, we've got here, each module also consists of the assessment for the target talent, talent curriculum or the CPD. So that's year one. What do we do on year two? Year two, both of you go it alone. There is no cross curricular at the moment. So the sport management students will be just with sport management students. And within our year two, we study sport operations management. So again, we've done operation management, but we're now moving on to more sports and it's a bit more developed. We're now at level five. This isn't just the knowledge, but it's actually the application and just starting to analyze that knowledge. We then look at sports law and ethics. And again, I've put some little pictures on there to, to hopefully help you understand what that actually means. Um, and it will change every year. We look at the sport analytics. Again, we, we're slightly changing this at the moment. It's more of the, the business sports analytics that we're looking from the business side. And we look at sport policy and sport development. And again, um, we do our target talent curriculum, which are embedded within the modules that you study. And at the end, you do a, a small assessment. So what do we do in a business studies um, year two? So within this one, we do business ethics and sustainability. I know it's got year three that, please ignore that. It should say year two. We do business ethics and sustainability. Um, if anybody's been watching anything that's going on at the moment, um, ethics is such a big um, topic and sustainability is such a big topic. So we get you ready for when you again move into industry. We look at um, a module that builds on from marketing from year one to digital marketing, which most things are moving that way and again with without me going on too much about what's happened in the last year how things have moved on to a lot more digital example for what we're doing normally you'd be in on campus with us which would be great but we can't because of the current situation but we can move things digital and we look at that from a marketing point of view we move on from our operations um and um performance to operations management so again as I said with the sport management it's more about the analysis that you're starting to do and then we look at it from a global point of view and that's not only with um, looking at the organization but actually managing so you'll be doing bits of HR from a, um, a national point of view an international and how that then can start to change because most businesses now are international. We have international students, so we need to know about um, how that affects us as a business. So that's gonna be even more so for when you get to the end of your three year degree. Again, each module consists of assessment of the target talent curriculum. I'm not gonna say that again. Final year, so we've already run through two years. We're on our final year at year three. Sport management, what do you study? So we have two um, individual modules and then two modules that most year two students will study in their year three. 
So the first one is sport governance. So it's a little bit moving on from the sports law and ethics and actually what governs um, sport, which will include some of the law that governs and the issues if you don't comply with that governance and what can happen. We'll also look at rethinking leadership. Yes, you're looking at sports, but you will also be, you're going to be graduates. So we're hoping that you're going to be leaders within there and you'll be able to rethink that. I haven't missed out the second one, which is contemporary issues in sport management. The contemporary issues is whatever is going on at that particular time that you're doing your degree. So if you were in year three now, I'm going to say it again, I do apologise. The contemporary issues would be COVID, sport management. How do you manage that? Anything to do with sport? Because it has had to completely change. The same as if we were looking in the hospitality sector, how things have changed. If it's in education, how things have changed. So there's some of the contemporary issues that we'll look at. That then helps you build on to your final project. And the final project is not like a, a normal traditional university where you'd have to do a dissertation, it's open. It may be that you run with a business plan, it may be that you run with um, a sport event, it may be um, that you work with some of our partners. It is open to you, however, with the guidance of all of our wonderful tutors to get you through to that end project. Our final year now on business studies, so what will you study? Again, we've got two um, more academic modules and two which are similar to our other degrees. So we have enterprise and innovation to hopefully explain what is the difference between and what, what are similarities between the two, getting you ready again for the workplace. And you've got a strategic leadership. So slightly different to rethinking leadership with the sport management, you're more looking at the strategy. We have a, temp a contemporary issue. So again, contemporary issues within, within business studies. Most businesses this year have been affected, if not all businesses, with the dreaded COVID. And that's probably one of the contemporary issues. In three years time, it might be something completely different, which is a contemporary issue, which affects, which then again will help your project. Again, the project, we, we don't, we're not prescriptive in telling you what you have to do for your project. What we're looking within that project is something that you want to do and you want to run with. It's far easier um, if it's something that you enjoy rather than saying, right, you're going to do a 10,000 word dissertation on this subject. What we'll also be using will be our industry partners as well to help with those projects. But I'll talk a little bit more about those. So hopefully that's explained a little bit of what you study over the two different programmes. We do also have our accounting and finance and our accounting and business. They're slightly different um, in that they um, are tied into some of the professional accounting bodies. And that's why we do them separately. But um, if you do have any questions about that you want to do accounting, you can always ask at the end or, or always pick up with us at another time. So we've looked at that as a whistle stop tour of what do we do over two different programmes, the, the type of subjects that you will, or the subjects that you will study over your, your three years. But what does that actually mean? One of the things we always get asked as well is, um, how do we get assessed? Because I know this is some of the issues with a lot of people, we, do, we don't like exams. Slightly different again for accounting, but for our business studies, and our sport management, the majority of them are um, more vocational types of assessments. So it will include something like a reflective portfolio. So over your five weeks of study, we look at how that has helped you and we will answer some questions. You may do a group presentation, you may do some practical um, work. Again, for our sports um, management students, their module with our, um, our sports group, it will be more of a practical um, assessment that you will do. You may do podcasts. We may get you to do a report or a business report. We may get you to do an essay. We may get you to do an individual presentation. One of the things that does come up about um, presentations when a lot of our students do get a little bit worried and just a little bit of an anecdotal, we do quite a lot of work with our business partners and I'll talk about them again in a, in a moment. But one in particular, um, we've done some work with SEMA and they've been providing our students with presentation skills that then will help them as they move out of academia and into the workplace. You have to be able to present. 
And I don't mean that that's necessarily, necessarily standing up in front of a room with a PowerPoint going on behind you. That's that you have to give information to different types of people and you have to know that audience. And we that's why we assess you in that way, to give you that skill of not only what is the, the subject, but actually, can you explain that subject well? Because that's what you're going to have to be doing when you move outside of, of finishing your degree. With our assessments as well, we usually, again, um, nothing's written in stone, but we usually have two assessments per block and they take place within weeks three and week five of a five week block on your academic study. Sometimes you may only have one, which will take place at the end of that block. That's how, and, and again, if anyone hasn't got any questions, I can't see the chat at the moment, but we'll have a look at the questions as we, as we go on. But that's what we would normally do. There may be um, an exam if you are doing more of um, a, an accounting module, but again, that is being looked at all the time. But we will get you through. We're moving away from the idea of doing exams all the way through but what we do is at the end of each academic block you will be doing your assessments then once you finish that um, block you then move on to your next block and you do your assessments from there so kind of different to how a traditional university would be where you would be studying three modules at the same time and then have three lots of assessment. You have one assessment or one academic subject assessment per block. So hopefully that's explained a little bit about how we do assessments. So go into, and, and again, you may know some of this, but those who don't know this, we have study that works around you, which again is very different to a traditional um, university from um, my, my previous employment where I've had my students, they may be in for a couple of hours on a Monday, not do anything on a Wednesday, do six hours um, on a Thursday, and then be in a session again on a Friday. And then it can change from each semester. So semester one, they'll be in certain times. Semester two, they'll be in certain times. They move on to year two, and it all changes again. And that doesn't always work with a lot of students. So how UA92 is very different um, is, the, how we do our study, you either do a morning or afternoon. So what that means is you're either in nine till one or you're in two till six. And that remains constant throughout your three years. So, and, and again, that works for an awful lot of students. So if um, you have a job and lots of our students do have jobs, if you know you are going to be in Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, nine till one, you know you can work around that as well. Or if you're in an afternoon, then you can work in the mornings. So again, it, it does work around you. It is structured in that it is a fixed timetable, but it's more flexible in that we don't change it block on block and year on year. And again, that, that point in the middle focused on learning, you do one module at a time. Although we only do five weeks around the academic module, we can just focus on that and we can get really in depth in our knowledge, understanding, application, analysis and evaluation and build that into what that means within the workplace rather than just looking at it from an academic point of view. We also have um, various start dates throughout the year. So you can start in September, November or January. With our September and our November students, if you start in November in your first year, the following year you then re can rejoin, or so you do rejoin in the September and you stay with your cohort for the rest of the year. If you start in January, that's slightly different. You'll always be a January start. There are some exceptions, but I'm not really going to discuss them at the moment. Just blow your mind a little bit on what we do. But we do have different start dates that we can um, accommodate people because sometimes the September isn't always um, convenient and I know with um, what happened with Covid last year, sorry said it again, that that did make students delay a little bit or some students delay just because they wanted to see what was going on. So I'm just going to have a look now at our degrees just to put them into a bit of a context. So what's so special about our sport management degree? Because you could go really and do a sport management degree anywhere. This is a sport management degree. It's not a business degree with a bit of sport thrown in. And hopefully you've been able to see that. 
by the modules that we look at. We're not just doing it as, oh yeah, we're going to call it um, introduction to business, but we're going to call it introduction to sport business. It is very much a sport degree. And what we've done that when we've written, we write it in conjunction with industry experts. We get them all the time saying, what do you want graduates to have when they finish in three years? What are the best skills for them to have? What is the knowledge? So they tell us and we build that into our degrees. That's the whole point of it. And it is very much a the sport management degree. When I move over to the next slide, I'll, I'll show you that that doesn't necessarily just pigeonhole you. So it's a sport management, but it's not just business. Then we look at, well, what's special about our business studies degree then? Again, as before, it's written in conjunction with industry experts. We speak to our business partners. We reach out to people and say, what do you want our business graduates to have? What skills do they need? What do you want from them? And we build that in. So if we're looking at assessments, we say, if we assess them in this way, is that really of any use to you? Or is there a better way that we could assess them? Or can you actually help us write with those assessments? Can you give us some case studies? Can you give us, give us some scenarios of things that actually happen and students solve those problems because they're the skills that you need? So that's what we do. So most will ask me, where can my sport management degree take me? These are just a number of different roles that you could have. A marketing manager at Manchester United, if you like Manchester United, sports manager for the Olympic Organisation Committee, a partnership manager at your favourite sports club, an account executive, sport agent, global event management, any graduate posts. It is not just limited to sports, but it does open up that sports door for you as well. So it is a solid um, management degree with sport and it can take you to a number of places. So then where can your business studies degree take me? And again, examples of the things of the people that we talk to, business management, business consultant, accounting and finance. Yes, even if you don't think that you could work in accounting, you can with a business management degree. Market, uh, marketing manager executive, HRM, which is human resource um, within there, retail management. There's a whole range of graduates graduate job it is a solid degree to enable you to move on within a business context so that's where they're going to take you and again this is not exhaustive there are so many more I just don't have time to go through all the different jobs that a business degree um bit of context my degree is around business studies and um, I've ended up being a law lecturer so there we go. So it's just, it can take you to a number of different places. Some of our business partners, we've got those who have law degrees and they've ended up in accounting and finance. We've got other ones who are accounting and finance, end up in law or they've ended up in sports. So it can take you a number of different places because it's such a solid degree. So what we're gonna look at now is what's in a typical session? What do we do within a typical session? Even though it's for four hours, that's a little bit of context on there. So we see you either nine till one or two till six, four times a week and we have a digital Wednesday. That sounds really scary. Seeing us for four hours, are we gonna talk at you for four hours? No, we can't do that. We physically can't be stood in front of you for four hours. If I was gonna be stood in front of you for four hours, I would be bored, I promise you. So therefore you're gonna be even worse than I am. So what we do is, Within our, our sessions, we have guest speakers that come in or insight days. We put that theory into practice. So we may look at some things and then we may get, may get people coming in. For example, I've had Talk Talk coming in recently to look at a business problem. And one of the things we were looking at, although it's within our accounting um, suite, that we were looking at performance management. And for any business studies students who may have done this, we were looking at break even. And kind of a dry bit of a topic, but they were actually saying, well, yeah, we use this and this is how we use it. And these are the problems that we solve. So they make it real rather than, we know the theory, we know how to do it, but actually what does it mean? Because you need to do that. So we'll have that within our sessions. We might have a whole day where um, COVID permitting, you go out and spend time on site with one of our, par our business partners. So you actually go into the workplace to get you again that it's that whole work ready. 
just as a, um, a bit of a bit of a show off, really, here are some of the guest speakers and industry partners that we've had within the last block. So within our last five weeks, these are some of the people that we've had coming in to speak to our business um, and sport management and accounting students. So we've had Talk Talk coming in. We've had the CEO from the Human Race, which is the, the marathon, sorry, the race director of uh, Manchester Marathon. We've got Stephen Brown, who is the CEO of the Rugby World Cup. We've got Hotel Football. We have the class of 92 coming in to do his um, talks. And you've probably seen a number of our videos as well on that. Um, Greater Manchester Police, KPMG, legal and that should say general, my bit of spelling on there, Trafford Council, people from the Trafford Centre. We've had more than this. There are only so many that I can put on there, but these are some of the people that come in and speak to you in conjunction with the sessions that we are giving to you. So they come in and they make it real. They know what you're doing. So we give them a full brief of this is what you're doing. How can um, that help them of what you're doing to put it into a bit of context? So how we actually learn, we have this thing and you've probably heard this in, in your schools and colleges, kin kinesthetic learning. So we, we do some theory and then we send you off. It may be that we just give you a topic. For example, um, I know that within um, some of our students, we had to look at a little bit of law and I sent them off and I said, right, what I want you to go and have a look at is have a look at the Employment Law Act. Come and get some key um, areas to know and feed them back and tell me what they mean. So tell me when it, it was created. Tell me what it superseded. And we, we go off and do sessions. Sometimes you might do some individual work because other times you'll do group sessions as well so it's very much about a little bit of uh, this is probably the most that I talk by the way in, in a session so we do a little bit of talking then you go off and we have these wonderful areas um, on campus that we're still able to use even when we're on campus in Covid because we can still um, social distance so our students when we were on we were still able to do that where they go off and they do some group work and then you feed that back it's far better for you to be able to do that and do more peer-to-peer -peer and we can address any issues because you're actually doing rather than four hours of listening there's just no way we could do that four hours of listening so these are again some of the things that I would have a look at one session we may go in and I might say right person we're looking at is What's a leader? And I'd have that open for a discussion. And some of you may have very, very different ideas of what a leader is. And what we would do within that, so again, this is on to my next slide, I'd get you to name some famous or non-famous leaders. And the way you may do that is we may have, I think which goes on to my next slide, we may have Padlets, we may do Mentees, um, we may do Post-it notes, we may just write on the whiteboard. And then we can discuss that. So if someone mentions a, one particular leader, I'll say, well, why are, why, they are, why are they a leader? What is it that they have that makes them a leader? How does that feed into this? So rather than me telling you, this is what a leader is, here's some example of some leaders, here's all the theory on it, we actually discuss and we develop that, then we can start to analyze that. What we then do is we may do some videos. And again, this is one of our sessions that we have. So we're gonna be quoting, watching, thinking and deciding. And we give you some, um, we do give theory, we do give some definitions. And we say, according to the Cambridge English Dictionary, a leader is a person in control of a group, country or situation. And then we'll say, well, actually, what does that mean? And you may go off. We, we're asking you, and again, these, this is just taken out of one of our sessions. We say, well, how true is that meaning? So it is very much an interactive session. You are not listening. I know it's a bit difficult at the moment because we're doing it through Zoom and I can't see you. And we've probably got quite a lot of people here. I get you to tell me what you think about that. And we have nice discussions. It may be that you have a little break off and I say, right, okay, five minutes to discuss this, then come back and we come back in our groups. We then may watch a video. I'm just conscious of the time, so we might not be able to watch this video, but we've got a little video and it can, these slides can be shared with you as well. So you can have a look at these. And it's for discussion of, right, okay, here's a leader, is it true? And asking you, well, what are your perceptions now? After watching that video, what is a leader now? Is it different to what you thought it was before? How do you think it's different? Why do you think it's different? So you can see there's very much of the ownership on, on you guys to feed that back to us and then we can address any misconceptions. 
Then what you're going to come up with, and this little bit here, is you come up with a definition based on that video. Now, we've gone through that really, really quick. And this may take us 20 minutes or so just to do this one tiny little bit of a, a, a bigger session. What we then do is, so again, I mentioned about the, the Padlet, is what I want you to do is tell me what are the key characteristics of a leader. So I put some leaders up there. They may not be ones that you know of. You may ask some questions based on that and ask me what are those leaders. And you can go on a Padlet. So again, some people don't like to um, answer things in front of everyone else in the class. That's fine. We're completely inclusive. But you could post something on, on Padlet. We can then share it. And I can be calling some of these out and say, all right, we've got here, this is a key characteristic of um, someone who um, takes risks. Ah, why is that a characteristic? Of, is it just a leader? Does anybody take risks? How does that tie in? Why does it tie in? So it opens up all of that discussion. So what you're actually doing is very discreet learning as opposed to you're just listening to me telling you what it is. We're discussing it and we're bringing it all together. We then may go through and say okay right these are what you've said these are some of the ones that i've said do you agree with that so we've got a great leadership here of honesty delegation communication humor commitment attitude creativity and you may say actually Flora, i don't agree with that i think some of them you need to have this as well and then we may discuss and say well actually maybe the theory needs updating because someone's saying this is what they should have however we think it's more than that and why it's more than that that isn't to say we won't be using some of the theorists but we can build some of this. In another session when I was looking at leadership and um, teamwork, I got students to do um, a bit of a session on just ask, answering some questions. And they answered some questions and it gave them um, a result of, this is the type of person that you are. Once we've gone through all that, at the end it was like, do you know what, you just learned a theory now, but you didn't know you were learning the theory. We, we do it sort of like back to front, which is good. We then again may watch um, another video. Again, I'm just conscious of the time and if anyone's got any questions, which looks at things like um, good leaders versus bad leaders, what makes a good boss. Um, this particular video looks at, and it goes on for two minutes, and it looks at children saying what they feel makes a good boss. So again, it's from a different perspective and we can dissect that, say whether we agree with that or actually are they more insightful than than adults are or these theorists are. We then bring it all together. Again, a four hour session, bear this in mind, this could take four hours. And what we might do then is, what I'll ask you to do is come up with a question um, to test one of your peers. So if we've got a group of 20, we've got 20 questions and you're asking them what they've learned today. So again, you have to then be able to ask them a question. If they say, oh, I've learned what leadership is, OK, what does that mean? Well, what is leadership? You tell me. And again, it, it moves over that you are the teacher, not just that we're there. We're there to facilitate your learning. And that is such a big thing that it is definitely about the facilitation. We are not lecturers. We don't lecture. you. So I've been talking for almost 34 minutes and it feels like a lecture. We don't do this in the session. You would be off by now doing some sort of um, activity and then coming back to me later on. So again, we'd get you to write in the chat box, if you could um, write that in the chat box, or you'd be putting it on a mentee, or you'd be putting it on posters. Yes, students still like to do posters and post-it notes. And we'd have that discussion. We ha we'd have a final slide of maybe a little video right at the end, just as a little reminder, some little fun things. And sometimes you might even have a little bit of a video, which is, or a task which is completely away from the subject that we're studying to give you a kind of a little bit of a break. Um, even if we're on campus, we will be doing that to then refresh us all and bring us all back together. So I've got to the end of my slides. Hopefully that's not too bad because it gives us about 10 minutes to uh, go through any questions. Um, Katie, do you want me to uh, stop sharing now and we can look at any questions? Yes, definitely. Excellent, all right, I'll stop share and you can see me. That, oh, we've got 35 people and I can see in that. Have we had many people asking any questions? Do you want me to have a look in the chat? So we, well, I, I can ask you them. So we've just had a question for you from Kerry. Um, so she's just asked, what percentage is assessments and what percentage is exams? Right. Um, if it's for business, 
it is over the full three years, I would, I'm just trying to work this out, 36. So you'll have 36 modules of which one may be an exam. So whatever percentage is that, is it about 5% overall? But we don't operate kind of a, an end of year exam programme, do we? So it's very much uh, assessments through the modules as you go. So you're not having to cram all that learning that you learned in September, October into the exams that you do in kind of May or June. You are assessed as you go, which is a little bit different to kind of the traditional higher education model. I know that when I went to university, um, I was kind of, uh, did all my exams at the end of the year and I really struggled with that. I'm not an exam type of person. So for our students, that's, that's something that they kind of really enjoy. Katie, on that, that can just um, hopefully a bit, bit of hot off the press. Um, because our business students work with our business and accounts or our accounting and finance students, that's why they do one exam. However, um, it may be slightly different for our September starts because we're looking at how we amend the module and although they'll do the module together, their assessment will be different. They don't have to do the exam because they're not looking for the exemptions. So they can still pass that, but they'll have a slightly different um, type of assessment. If that Does that make a little bit of sense? Because I know people do stress a little bit about that. And I get it, again, just between us, I hate exams, even though I've had to do loads of them for my professional qualifications. But hopefully that puts them a little bit of ease that there shouldn't be any, that you know, provided everything goes through, at worst there's one. Yeah, it's better than it's better than anything. Um, so we just have had another question too, actually. So I know a lot of universities do a dissertation at the end. Would we have to do one here? Right. So um, we don't do a dissertation as such, but you can do um, a a small research project as part of that project. So that final module that we do at the end of year three, which we just entitled "Project," is so wide, and people I know. I know I've gone through an awful lot of information at the moment. And, and what that is, is some like to do a dissertation, dissertation, but it's a lot smaller because it's 25 credits and it can be that style of thing. So you can do a research proposal and then write about it, but we don't make students do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that, is that answer? Hopefully that's answered this question. I can't see the question coming up now. Um, one other question, actually, what is, uh, I know you went through some of the careers for sports management, but I think on the Q&A someone wants a little bit more information um, around about what type of careers can happen after sports management, if you're okay to go through that. Right, so the, the type of careers um, are anything that is, is sport related. So one of the things I'll address straight away is the chances of you being a football manager is probably slim to nil unless you're a professional footballer. So I'll be very honest about that because we, we do get asked that and I know it's a bit of a joke. However, you could be a manager of a sports centre or a sports club within a football. So it's anything that was, is within that sport genre. Does that make sense? So like a sport agent, because you've got the underpinning knowledge of sport, so you understand about the law, you understand about the ethics, you understand about governance, you understand about policy. So you could work, work in agency, or you could work in anything that, that is around sport. So um, the Olympics work within any sort of management within the Olympics, because you've got that underpinning sport knowledge. That is not to say if you had a business degree that you couldn't work within there. However, it gives you that little bit more of, of um, of an edge. Has that, has that answered it, Katie? I'm hoping that's answered it. Yeah, I think so, definitely. And, and one final question, actually, that we've just had through, what's your favourite module on across the, the courses that you teach? Uh, see, I might be a little bit biased now because I love all things law and accounting and you guys won't be doing that at the moment. Um, if, it was, if it's business related, um, for the, for the sports guy, it will be sports law and ethics. And um, probably for the business, it will be sustainability and ethics. Um, because, sorry, go on. Um, because it's such a hot topic and it applies to us anyway. And it's ethics is really, really good because there's there's not a right or wrong in some contexts. So therefore we can play with it. And I love being able to play with some subjects, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, I was just going to ask why sustainability and ethics and you've completely answered it. I think it's so interesting when you can do kind of modules that you can kind of relate straight away in your, in your kind of day to day life and sustainability is such a massive topic at the moment. It's great to have that as like a thread through the course for sure. I do have one other um, and a lot of people go, oh, so it's economics. I love economics economics I absolutely and people are like what but at the minute economics is everything covid economics the whole thing we can see everything that's changed anything in the news unemployment you know increased um, our gdp's gone down you know nobody's got any money it's the effect of everything that's economics and it's you can so easily put that into and especially when it's business economics rather than we're looking at the mc equal making sure that it's above the a yeah i get that and i love that however it's i would say that's probably a nice one but the sport management don't do that one i would say oh so we've got actually a few more questions i think is that okay if we go through a few more so there's another one from yeah. Kat again is there anything you were looking for in a personal statement when the pupils apply the biggest thing I would say is a passion for what you want to do. That's definitely one of the biggest things. Show us why you want to do that subject. Because I know there's grades that you have to have, which is, is fine. However, I would personally um, take students on who have a passion for that subject because they're they're more likely to do well rather than the fact that they've got straight A's all the way through the fact that it's like do you know what I really want to do business or I really want to do sport management or I really really want to do accounting or I really want to do law or I really want to do media that okay my grades are only about here and it's that passion just show that you've got passion I would definitely say and one thing that I always say to students as well is try and pick out those transferable skills that you will use on your business course, your sports course, whatever, that you've actually gained already. So you may already have those through kind of your BTEC, A-levels, GCSEs, you may already have part-time jobs. So I worked at McDonald's uh, before I started university and throughout university as well. And I could pick up those transferable skills like communication, teamwork, dealing with really difficult customers. And I could really bring that into my to my business degree to my university degree and actually kind of show how I had those skills as well so try and pick those transferable skills out that you already have and you can include those on your personal statements um, time management time management is definitely one that you can show that you can do definitely and one final question actually so one question from Izzy is that where did you start your career ah my first where I, when I left school um I worked in retail that was the start of my career. And then I worked in credit risk. And then um, after quite a few years, I retrained uh, to work in academia. Excellent. So yeah, and I've got a, a business degree. Well, it's a credit risk and business studies degree. Brilliant. I think that's a question we need to ask every single one of our guest speakers because everyone starts in kind of a lot of people start in different kind of careers than they actually end up in being and it's kind of pulling those like I've said transferable skills that you can kind of relate to every single job and career role that you have in your day-to-day -day life. I, I do think everybody should work in retail. Yeah I completely agree. <laughs> it's, it's a good even if you're just doing it part-time while you're doing your studies it, it it builds up resilience. Yeah it definitely builds up your resilience. So. Definitely. So thank you so much for that, Flair. I really, really enjoyed it. If anyone does have any questions, um, then you can still pop them in the chat box and I'll send them across to Flair and I'm sure Flair will answer them uh, over email or when I can answer them as well. But I'd just like to say thank you very much, Flair.